Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Monorat Storm slash Burn deck featuring O'Hare Ashonil, the Deepest Might, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 4-mana 4 4-4 four four Legendary God with Trample, saying if a red source we control would deal an amount of non-combat damage less than Ashonil's power to an opponent, that source deals damage equal to its power instead. And then when it dies we can also transform it into the Temple of Power, which can maybe transform back into our God if we don't send it to the command zone instead, if we can deal 4 damage of non-combat sources to the opponent and then pay the 3 mana and tap it as well. So the goal is to get our commander in play and then start dealing damage in small increments which will then be upgraded to at least 4 damage, maybe even more if we can increase our god's power. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with our mana acceleration. I've got a lot of ramp artifacts so we can try and get our god in play ahead of schedule and maybe play a few spells in the same turn so we can immediately deal a lot of damage. Then we've got a pretty large section dedicated to repeatable damage effects, often only dealing 1 damage, which is perfect, since that will then be upgraded to at least 4 damage with our god in play. Then we've got lots of cantrips as well, ways to discard and draw, so we can keep churning through the deck and string together more non-creature spells, which will then enable our damage effects in the first place. Then we've got a few dedicated burn spells that can try and close out the game, and then a few pump effects as well to increase our god's power, so we can maybe deal 7 damage as as opposed to 4 whenever we damage the opponent. And then we've got kind of the miscellaneous section with the boots to protect it, and Chandra's Incinerator also has great synergy throughout. So now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration, there's Strike It Rich, also just a cheap sorcery to trigger some of our creatures in the deck, making a treasure token, and we can flash it back so we don't feel bad discarding it. Runaway Steamkin can add a lot of extra mana if we cast enough red spells, so this is awesome for kind of our combo turn, where we cast a lot of spells in the same turn. Then we've got our ramp artifacts with Signet, Heart, Idol, Mindstone, Ornithopter of Paradise, and the Iron Crag. At 3 mana we also have Burgi, which will add red mana whenever we cast a spell, so that also makes it easier to combo off and cast a lot of spells in the same turn. Can also potentially play the Horn of Bounty for card advantage. And then Heraldic Banners, one of my favorite cards in the deck, not only adding extra mana, but also increasing our team's power by 1, so now we can deal 5 damage with our god instead of 4. Then the Celestus gives us a bit of card selection and mana acceleration. We've got a Worn Power Stone, adding double colorless if we get to untap with it. And then at 4 mana, Chandra, of course, very flexible, can be used as removal to add mana, or to maybe deal damage repeatedly with the other plus 1 ability, especially once we have our god in play. And then Urobrask, another very important card in this deck, for 4 first strike, already pretty decent. And then whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we get to deal 1 damage to target opponent, which can maybe upgrade to 4 damage, and we also get to add extra red mana, so it kind of combines Burgi's ability with the various uh, damage dealing creatures as well. And then if we do manage to string together enough instants and sorceries, we can even transform Orobrask into the Great Work, which can also generate a ton of value. And then a Goldspan Dragon is here as well, making extra mana thanks to the treasure tokens, and there's plenty of treasure tokens throughout the deck to synergize with it as well. And then moving on to our damage dealing section, we ideally want cheap cards that we can deploy before playing our god and that can repeatedly deal a small amount of damage. So the Blister Spit Gremlin can pay 1 mana, tap, deal 1 damage to each opponent, and whenever we cast a non-creature spell we can untap it, so we can maybe use it several times in the same turn as we're comboing off. Fanatical Firebrand we can play early, attack with, and then sacrifice to deal 1 damage to any target, so we can take out 1 toughness creatures, or we can save it until we deploy our god to deal 4 damage instead. Sawblade Scamp can also get some attacks in early, and then once we cast non-creature spells it will store up oil counters, which we can then uh, cash in to tap and deal 1 damage to each opponent. It's also quite good if the board gets stalled. Spear Spewer deals 1 damage to each player, but that will translate into 4 damage to the opponent, whereas we only take 1 damage. Then Electrostatic Field, dealing 1 whenever we cast an instant or sorcery on an 0-4 defender. We've got the Flamesmith and Firebrand Archer, which are very similar. Archer actually a little bit better, since it also triggers off artifacts and enchantments, whereas Flamesmith only triggers off instants and sorceries, dealing 1 to each opponent. And then Impact Tremors deals 1 damage to each opponent whenever a creature enters under our control, so that can also immediately deal 4 damage when we play our god. 
We've got the Flame Breather, which is more similar to the Firebrand Archer, but instead of a 2-1 we get a 1-3. And then Roiling Vortex will deal 1 damage to each player at the beginning of their upkeep, and we can also pay red mana to prevent a life gain for the turn, and it also punishes players for casting spells for free. We've got the Sunshot Militia, which can tap other creatures and artifacts to deal 1 damage to each opponent, so it can maybe activate that several times in one turn. Thermal Alchemist can also be quite nice if we cast Instance and Sorceries, as we get to untap it each time, and can already deal 1 damage itself turn after turn. Then we've got the Fiery Inscription, turning a creature into a Ring Bear, and then whenever we cast an Instant or Sorcery spell, deals 2 damage to each opponent. Got the Rampaging Ferocidon, preventing life gain, and whenever a creature enters it will deal 1 damage to that creature's controller, so that can also upgrade to 4 damage. Unruly Catapult is similar to Thermo Alchemist on an 0-4 Defender, and then a Chandra can also deal 1 with the plus 1 ability, adding extra red mana in the process, or can provide card advantage with a second plus 1 ability. And then a Leyline of Lightning, also a fun inclusion, can maybe start the game with it on the battlefield if we have it in our opening hand, and then whenever we cast a spell we can pay 1 mana to deal 1 damage to target player or planeswalker. And then we continue with our card draw section, where we've got a lot of cantrips, ways to draw and discard, maybe make some treasures in the process, which will also make it easier to double spell. We've got Ancestral Anger, increasing a creature's power by one, so it can also get our god up to 5 power and draw a card. Crash Through gives a team trample and draws, Fury gives a first strike and draws, and then Ryle just needs to target one of our creatures and will draw a card as well. Then we've got Faithless Looting to draw to discard two, can also be flashed back. Cathartic Reunion, discard 2 to draw 3, Thrill, discard 1 to draw 2, which is Mark is actually pretty synergistic too, since it can create a Wicked Roll token, increasing our god's power by 1, and then can also discard and draw 2. Light of the Stage just needs to have Spectacle enabled to cast it for 1 mana, so we can exile the top 2 cards and play them until our next turn. And then a Cease Spoils, Big Score, Pirate Spillage, and Windfall, always to discard and draw while making treasure tokens. And then we continue with our burn spells, and the festivities can deal 4 damage to the opponent while dealing 1 to their creatures, same with the tectonic hazard. Then we've got our lightning bolt of course, still great even if it doesn't get a huge upgrade from having our god in play, still very versatile. Then we've got play with fire, maybe letting us scry 1 to find more burn spells, shock deals 2 damage, and then a spike field hazard can also be a land if we want it to be. And then a Grape Shot is actually one of our better finishers if we can cast it alongside some other spells, as for each Storm copy we can potentially deal 4 damage. A Lightning Strike, a more expensive Lightning Bolt. Flick a Coin makes a treasure, draws a card and deals 1 damage, so pretty versatile here as well. And then both halves of Virtue of Courage are great, can deal 2 damage, and can also play the 5 mana enchantment that can generate a lot of card advantage, since we're often dealing a non-combat damage. And then we've got a couple of cheap pump spells. Infuriate increases power by 3, same with Monstrous Rage in the form of a monster roll token as well, which will stick around. And then a Reckless Charge also gives haste and can be flashed back, and Titan Strength also lets us scry one, whereas Crescendo costs 2 mana but also generates a bit of card advantage. And then finally we've got the boots to give our god hexproof, so it's not going to be taken out as easily. And then the incinerator we can often play for just a single red mana, and then a nice 6-6 trampler that can also deal extra damage to opposing creatures when we deal damage to the opponent directly. And then our mana base is mostly mountains, a few utility lands including Castle Embereth, even though we're not attacking with our creatures all that often. Then of the Bugbear as a creature land can maybe get some damage in. Ramana Pruins is still a colorless source, so it doesn't get upgraded by our god, but can still deal 2 damage to maybe close out the game. Crucible to make a pair of 1 ones. Nykthos can maybe give us a small mana boost to redeploy our commander if it's taken out. And then the Desert can also deal 1 extra damage, can maybe synergize with Ramana Pruins. And then a Tyrite Sanctum can make our god indestructible if we sacrifice it. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty promising hand. Seize the spoils, pillage, making treasure. Can eventually generate more mana with Steamkin. So we're just missing some kind of payoff cards for uh, casting non-creature spells. Our opponents with a combination of Nethroi and Umori, so an all-creature kind of graveyard deck. So they shouldn't have too much removal. Halfling can attack past it once we seize the spoils here. And discarding Strike at Rich is reasonable, although I'm still going to hang on to it for now. A one mana spell to trigger Steamkin might be valuable. 
And then could cash in the treasure to make another treasure. Doesn't seem all that productive, even if we do get an extra plus one counter. Now looting, also something we wouldn't mind discarding since it has flashback. Better opponent now with a Lotus Cobra, giving them access to quite a bit of mana. Puts Umori in hand. Right, Spear Spewer is nice. So can play the Spear Player God attack for four and then still do some things afterwards. Yeah, that sounds fine. The window of attacking with our creatures and dealing damage is pretty quickly closing, so we're going to have to rely on some non-combat damage. Our opponent takes it. And yeah, we could cash in the mana from Steamkin to cast Faithless Looting and then maybe Arcane Signet as well. Flick a coin I like and Archer is great too here. So discard Strike at Rich and Signet. And then I can play Archer right now. And then next turn we should be able to present a lot of damage. Opponent could also play Nethroi as a large lifelinker here. For now Stitcher Supplier. Milling a couple lands. And a tapped castle. So still four mana available for Umori. Okay, opponent stamped out. So we should be able to do quite a bit of damage here, especially with a grape shot. So flick a coin step one. Go upstairs, deal for damage. Triggering Steamkin. Make mana. Pillage discarding mountain. And we could now light up the stage for one mana thanks to Spectacle. Another four from the Archer and then Grape Shots with a pretty high storm count here. Could even play one mana Incinerator. So yeah, our deck is really going off here. Haven't even activated Spears Pure yet. And yeah, this Grape Shots is four damage for each copy, so more than enough. Sadly, we don't get to see all the damage here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the dinosaur deck. And uh, yeah, our hand has potential. Lots of creatures that can ping the opponent. So hopefully we get to play them alongside our commander. For now, probably start with Spear Spewer. Since it doesn't require any extra mana to deal damage. Turn to Cold Steel Hearts. And then next turn could already play our god. The Lighted Halfling is next. Okay, and a land. So Spear Spear can deal one damage. I'm guessing we're more likely to be the aggressor in this matchup. Okay, so player god. We're also increasing our devotion for Nykthos, which could come in handy. And then I'm just gonna spear spew now, in case our opponent could remove our commander in response to make sure we deal 4 damage. Sadly, a source to plowshares to exile it. So it's not going to be transforming into a land. Just have to send it back to the command zone. And our opponent gets to deploy their commander as well. All right, we're in trouble here. Opponent finds a gilded goose. So yeah, just got to deploy some creatures, build up our devotion for Nykthos. And then next turn, hope to redeploy.
Carnosaur is a good one. Draws with Beanstalk and triggers not only Discover but also Pantlaza. Sunwing makes our creatures enter tapped, not a huge deal. And what does Pantlaza find? A hulking raptor. Alright, that's a lot of stuff. Take four. And I think we're still spear spewing. Take our turn. Infuriates. Well, we have a lot of combo potential here. So let's say we play our god. It leaves one mana. So maybe not quite as much as I would have hoped. Let's say I infuriate up to seven power. This will still only deal four. This can deal seven. This can deal seven. Yeah, that should be enough here. Our opponent's at one, and then we just need to untap with our gremlin. I guess there's still the food from Gilded Goose that can gain the opponent some life. And now we're Rishkar's expertise. Our opponent's drawing a lot of cards. Puts in a Regisaur. Can we survive this attack? They still have a food token to gain three up to four. But if I get to untap with Spear Spewer and our god, that's four damage. Put on making mana instead. For a Frostodon, no life gain. But it does have haste. And an all-out attack. So we're at 21. This is... Let's see, 10... 20, 24, so we definitely have to block some creatures. Something like this has us taking 11, 12, 13, plus 3, 16. Okay. And yeah, if we get to untap Spear Spear's game, and our opponent's gonna go out on their own terms. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Omnath, a locus of all, and we've got a pretty nice hand, just missing some cheap non-creature spells to enable Field and Flame Breather. We'll start with a Flame Breather, since that can actually trigger off playing artifacts. And then, of course, attack for two, potentially. Impact Tremors could be fun. Alright, so for now, play Banner. Could also light up the stage here. Although that might mess up my sequencing a little bit. I think we wait to cast it until after we play our god and electrostatic field. Our opponent's gonna need to develop their mana to play Omnath. Up the beanstalk for card draw. And they were careful to leave a blue mana for a potentially wash away. So instead of playing into it, I could go for Impact Tremors, Electrostatic Field, and uh, take it from there. Still probably wait on Light of the Stage until next turn. So we can play our god, light up for one mana after triggering Impact Tremors, and then trigger both Flame Breather and Field for four damage each, or I guess five damage with Banner now. Blood Chief's Thirst takes out Flame Breather. All right, let's just keep playing things that don't get countered by Wash Away. For Ossodon, and then it might be time to a light of the stage, after all. A 
uh, land and play with fire, so we can maybe save that for next turn. Chromatic Lantern still keeps a blue mana. We're at the point where we can probably replay this for six or try and transform it as well. Especially now with an alchemist, so... Ah, uh, yeah. Play this into Wash Away. And then I'm gonna have to play with Fire now. But we can still play Alchemist, so that seems fine. And if this does resolve, it's probably game over. But the opponent's been sitting on this Wash Away for a while. So Command Zone or not. I think sending it back to the Command Zone is actually okay since we have the mana to replay it. And then it will immediately deal 4 with Impact Tremors. So we can play with Fire. And a Gold Span is also fine to keep, I guess. Attack for 4. So yeah, identifying the opponent's Wash Away and then... Trying to play around it as best we could made a pretty big difference, since it allowed us to develop our board while the opponent was forced to keep up blue mana, although, yeah, Wash Away is still very efficient and not that difficult to keep up. Nicol Bolas is next, draws with up the Beanstalk, can take out Ferocidon perhaps, but then our opponent's still gonna be dead on board if we play our god. Triggering Impact Tremors, and then Alchemist deals 4 damage. I guess 5 damage, I keep forgetting about Banner. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Myco Tyrant, a graveyard deck. And yeah, we've got a promising hand, just need some instants and sorceries to trigger our various cards here. Turn one Lenor Elves is scary. I'll offer the trade for Scamp. And then turn two likely Cold Steel Hearts. Could also Virtue of Courage take out a mana creature. Or maybe the Myco Tyrants. Yeah, that's probably worth it. Next turn, Inscription. Turn after, we'll have to reevaluate. Elspeth's Nightmare, very effective against us, too. So, non creature, non land card is going to be taken away, which is going to be Cold Steel Hard if we play Inscription. Yeah, so it goes. There was an argument for playing Cold Steel Hard to set up a Goldspan Dragon on the following turn. Although our opponent getting to see our hands could just keep up some instant speed removal for Goldspan. And Inscription could be quite valuable once we deploy our god. Tampering to start filling the graveyard here. Okay. Could double two drop. Prefer playing our god if they take it out. It turns into a land. Get to play Goldspan Dragon. And yeah, we're just a couple cheap cantrips or burn spells away from a lot of damage between Flamesmith, Archer, and Inscription, all dealing for damage. There's a Myco Tyrant, which will. Mill. There's a Myco Tyrant making five tokens right away, so that hurts. Alright, deploy our creatures and hope for the best. Picked up a play with fire. Could cast it in upkeep to scry and try and find another cantrip here. Opponent still has a long way to go to enable the tampering, but it's just a good enabler for Myco Tyrant. Argoth milling a few more cards. 
So Descend is at 4. They milled some uh, non-permanent cards. Interesting attack by the Lanor Elves. I guess your opponent just wants to push as much damage as possible. And they get to make an extra token this way as well. Well, we're probably not getting another turn. So I think that means play with Fire and Upkeep. Hope to scry into another cheap non-creature spell. Mountain's not going to do it. And do we get there? Seize the spoils, we do. Awesome. That's 12 more damage. And our opponent explodes onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Rocco, Street Chef. So that can kind of punish us for casting spells from exile with land of this stage, but it, this is still a very keepable hand. Ornithopter hopefully giving us some extra mana. Archer can help enable light of the stage. And turn 2 PI, yeah, that one's very good too alongside Rocco. Could maybe go off with Urobrask, that would be exciting. We've got lots of cheap cantrips, so might be feasible. A Roiling Vortex. Player casts a spell if no mana was spent to cast it, so not quite the hate cards we want for the matchup. All right, we're at a crossroads here. Can play our god, which will be great once we deploy Archer. I think Orobrask has more upside if it survives. Also a nice blocker to hold off some of the opponent's ground creatures. Your opponent gets a Thopter, gets a food token and a plus one counter. A Mind Stone is next. And a Boots. That we don't mind. We're not planning to destroy the opponent's creatures. Find a Mountain. We've got plenty of Mountains in hand, so I don't think we need to play the one from Exile. We could cast one of our Cantrips, deal damage, enabling Light of the Stage which we can cast for one mana. Could also wait to set that up next turn and just for now play the god. And uh, yeah, next turn we should be able to combo off quite nicely. But it does mean having to dodge a removal spell for another turn, which might be feasible, especially if our opponent plays the smithy. All right, let's go for the highest upside play here. Could attack with Ourobrask. For opponent triple blocks. That would still go through. Sure. The extra damage could matter. Opponent just jumps. Fair enough. Now Anger on our god could also let the Archer deal 5 damage as opposed to 4. So yeah, I'm looking forward to next turn. Hopefully there's no interaction. That's one large token. But we might be able to win the game without needing to attack. Iron Crag and a Shock. Alright, those are all excellent. So, step one. Play Archer. Then we can essentially cast all our cantrips for free thanks to Urobrask. Start with Anger on our god. Archer now deals 4, but the next trigger will be 5 damage. Can light up the stage. And yeah, this is certainly going to be lethal. can still rile, so plenty more triggers coming up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Borborygmos and Fibblethip, so a uh, ramp deck. Our hand is missing some mana. Um, some four mana treasure makers are all nice and good, but if we can cast them in the first place, 
It doesn't do us any favors. Boots also pretty mana intensive if we want to immediately protect some of our key creatures. So we'll take a mulligan. Alright, this is better. Get to put a ley line of lightning on the battlefield. And then we've got some creatures that will synergize well with our god. Although they are susceptible to Borborygmos and Fibblethip taking them out. So next turn I can play Flamesmith and pay the one. Opponent ramping with the Growth Spiral. I'll save the desert in case we can maybe finish off a Planeswalker with it. Could be relevant. Alright, so... Yeah, next turn play the God. Turn after, Hazard could deal a ton of damage with Archer and Flamesmith. And a Risen Reef. Alright. Opponents building up their mana very nicely. So we could be in a bit of trouble. Could have also gone with a different line where we pillage and then hazard to deal with Risen Reef. Time Warp is still acceptable here. And there's Borborygmos, hopefully they can't do too much damage. Discarding two lanes, so that's our god dealt with, unfortunately. Um, let's see, next turn, if I hazard, pay the one, two more damage, we can actually transform it back. And pay the cost. The desert can also help, although I guess it's only red sources that count. Alright, so... Play Hazard, and then pay three, so I don't have the mana to play Steamkin, but I can pay one from Leyline of Lightning. Okay. First time managing to transform back. And then next turn with the Pirate's Pillage, we could be in business. No, Domri is going to fight our god once again. I think once again, we don't want to send it back to the command zone. Better opponents pulling further and further ahead. They can take out some of our creatures now too with the attack. So it's going to be even harder to transform this back. Could just trade, but our opponent can pretty easily replay it with all the extra mana from Henge. So it's not looking good. A Roiling Vortex. Yeah, I guess we'll start growing this Teamkin, but our creatures are just gonna die to this Borborygmos attacking us, turn after turn. If I were to just pillage, discard Steamkin. If we pay the one from Leyline, we're still only dealing 2 damage, so I don't think it's realistic to transform back this turn. Alright. Might have been worth it to skip the Steamkin just so we could have finished off Domri with a Leyline. Urabrask doesn't have many cantrips left to try and transform. And now a Genesis Ultimatum, yep. So likely just dead here. Primeval Titan, Titan of Industry, Heuristic Study. Yeah, we're buried in card advantage here. Putin can destroy our Leyline. Well, we were pretty close to doing something cool. But, uh, yeah, our god got answered one too many times. And this is certainly game over. 
still nice that we got to transform the Temple of Power. Don't get to see that every day. Lucamina transforms, and I'm hoping we're just dead here. We're at two. And a lightning bolt, I think, will do the honors. I guess I could technically transform this once again with a bolt. Uh, pay the one, sure. Alright, we did it twice, but now we're certainly dead. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Merfolk with Kumena at the helm. And uh, our hand is potentially keepable. It's a bit low impact. Gremlin, not one of our more exciting damage dealers. No real relevant removal. And Celeste is at three without a third lane. Could be awkward. Let's try a free mulligan. All right, this is a bit more exciting. If we can get our banner down, maybe turn for gold span would be ideal. But just flamesmith and inscription could already deal quite a bit of damage. And deep root elite are going to provide a lot of counters. So yeah, this is going to be a race. The merfolk are going to put a lot of power and toughness in play, make it difficult for us to attack on the ground. But hopefully there's one turn where we get to untap with our god in play and just deal a massive amount of damage. Okay, for now play banner and it looks like we'll be able to play gold span next turn. Think we are okay attacking, I doubt our opponent wants to trade. There's a chance our opponent's got a Pact of Negation in hand, since I did detect a bit of a pause. Pacting our gold span would be kind of painful. So what's the alternative here? If I play gold span, opponent has to pay for Pact, then next turn they won't be able to counter anything. And then we could play our god, a Virtue of Courage. Yeah, I think we'll still go for gold span. They could of course have a different counter spell other than pact. But yeah, there's the pact. The opponent has to pay five. And we'll take it. Okay. So we've got free rain. Which probably means deploy our commander. And then could see taking out Deep Root Elite as well. Slow the opponent down just a bit. Or we can play Spear Spewer and then hope to untap with our god so we can deal a ton of damage with Inscription and Virtue going face. Sure. would be unfortunate if they have some way of shutting down our commander. There's a few auras in blue and green that can remove all abilities. Nope, opponent just taps out for Tatiova. That's acceptable. So they could be dead next turn. So let's say we start with big score, two treasure, can still inscription and hazard. That looks good to me. So virtue can go. So that's a 15 damage hazard, 5 itself, 5 from Inscription, 5 from our Flamesmith, and then we still had Spear Spear available. Awesome, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand facing Ivy, so can expect some mutate cards and various auras. Firebrand potentially an answer to Ivy, forcing them to wait until they can protect it, so that might slow them down. And then Cold Seal Heart catapult, player commander. Charge will increase its power, so then catapult and firebrand can deal maybe seven damage each. For now we'll hit for one. Still fine to attack with a firebrand. If they play IV we can take it out next turn. But don't expect them to. Alright, Sanctum Weaver, that's fine. So we can resolve our commander. Or we can play Catapult first so it doesn't have Summoning Sickness next turn. Even though I could give it haste with Charge, we really want to charge on our commander instead. So I think Catapult makes some sense. Although let's say we play our God, then next turn I can charge Grape Shot, dealing 14 plus 7. So it is possible we can just win next turn with Grape Shot and we don't need Catapult. Alright, let's try it. Because we'll also be attacking with a 7 powered creature. Season of Growth we don't mind seeing. Can draw the opponent extra cards. And a Symbiote is next. Okay. That's all fine. Take our turn. And yeah, Reckless Charge. Into Grape Shots. That's 14 damage for 2 mana. Attack. And another 7 damage from the Firebrand. Opponent takes it. And this will be game. Not banned. Turn 4 kill. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Facing 5 color shrines. And our hand is... Missing some creatures that deal damage, but uh, I'll give it a shot. We've got a cantrip, we've got some one mana spells, so anything that benefits from casting instants and sorceries here could be pretty effective. Now we've got a titan strength as well, so that can potentially represent a bit of extra damage. All right, let's play our god. The next turn we could also animate then of the bugbear. Opponent with the red Honden. Okay, so let's say we were to Titan Strength, get this to seven power, then Hazard deals seven damage, and then Ryle just draws a card. Maybe I can start there, see what we pick up. Since now kind of the coast is clear for a pretty big hit. I guess we'll scry first with the Titan Strength, see what we find. Big score, I don't have the mana to cast right now. Okay, another cantrip. So I guess we cast this now. Flicker coin is going to be nice as well. Alright. So let's cast a Hazard, dealing 7, attack for 7, opponents at 11. And then flick a coin's another 4. Opponent down to 9 for a Honden of Cleansing Fire, so that can gain them life. Well, ideally they don't get another turn here, and we should be able to make that happen. Flick a coin, animate Guardian Idol. Should do it. Alright, that was a quick game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Could use a couple creatures that deal damage when casting instants and sorceries. 
don't think I want to strike it rich right away. Just for the extra mana. Probably want to save it as something to enable some of our creatures. Now Incinerator's going to be interesting with a Lightning Bolt. So if we deal 3 to the opponent, it gets a 3 mana discount. For now, play Cold Steel Heart. Opponent's going to be on Artifacts. And Tazeret can also gain the opponent life back, so the ability from Ferocidon could help. Alright, so... Opponent might have some interaction up here. Might still go for Guardian Idol over Ferocidon. And then... Next turn we have a few more options, including... A Lightning Bolt play Incinerator. Tomb of the Infinite, alright, that can find some powerful cards. Thermal Alchemist is what we wanted. So I can go Alchemist plus Ferocidon, and then next turn pretty easily deploy Incinerator as well. Opponent goes digging with a tomb. Hopefully they didn't find a duress to take away my lightning bolt. Alright, the archer is also nice. So I don't think we play our god yet this turn. Instead if I go archer, we can lightning bolt and then still incinerate. And then turn after we can play our god and strike it rich perhaps. That looks okay to me. Opponent takes out Thermal Alchemist, that's fine. Get to play one mana Incinerator. And attack for three. And then next turn, play our god, strike it rich, triggers archer. If our opponent plays a creature, they would take four damage off our Ocidon. And Incinerator can also redirect two opposing creatures. Okay, now our opponent does have a bunch of mana untapped. Could start by attacking. Don't think Guardian Idol's getting busy. Opponent fogs. Alright, that happens. So no damage. Can still strike it rich and deal four damage with Archer. That ignores fog. Opponent draws with the Witching Well. And yeah, they're gonna need some sort of sweeper here. Source to plowshares now. Nice answer to our god, exiling it. And we don't even gain life because of our own Ferocidon. So I have to send it back to the command zone. So we've seen two of the cards they've gotten so far. Now Tesseret Artifice Master. Not a huge deal. Really yep, yeah, opponent can draw cards, but then they're probably dead on board. And if they make a Thopter, it's not going to help too much when we can trample and menace past it with Ferocidon dealing them damage. Alright, so we got to see our Monorads burn deck in action here. And yeah, the deck has some pretty awesome lines where we can kill the opponent out of nowhere without even needing to attack. So that's a pretty unique property of this archetype. But it does mean that we do rely pretty heavily on our commander. So if we're facing a deck with a lot of interaction that can keep removing our god, then we're going to struggle to get anything going. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.